Hey, my name is Addie and welcome to The Pulse. Be sure to subscribe, like, and leave a comment below letting us know what you'd like to see next. Uh, tell him, uh, you got to tell him the story, the kick pedal of your drum. Oh, Have man. You never heard it, your brother. So, oh, <laughs> my brother who's a drummer. This is like 85, and I'm all knee deep. Like, I was in the rock. I was in the 80s pop. Those are my two soul fulfilling genres mm -hmm. 80s pop, 90s country. Right. I want to, if I want to be happy and I want to find some memories, music does that. Yeah. That's my go to's. Yeah. Like, during lockdown, I would sit down on Pandora and just play 80s pop or 90s country. As long as I could. What's I'm trying to think. Eighties pop. What would be eighties pop? I Tears mean, for Fears. Okay. Glass Tiger. Glass Police. Tiger. Sting. You know stuff like that. Even Whitney Houston. Oh, of course. Sure. You yeah, know, of course. Yeah. And it brought me back to, and I'll get to that story. When I was a kid, and my parents would, they weren't home. I would put the radio on, and play whatever song came on. It could have been Never Gonna Give You Up, <laughs> yeah. Never Gonna Let You Down. <laughs> I'm yeah. laying down a drum beat to it. Yeah. Whitney Houston would come on. I want to dance with somebody. I'd play that. Go to commercial, change the station. Country, cool. Let me play some Bellamy Brothers. Commercial, next station, whatever. That's what I did. So, 85, 86, man, DW comes out. They, other companies probably had them, but the double pedal. Yeah. To me, I remember them being the first one. They were the, yeah. So, I was like, dude, I want to get one of those double, double pedals. A double pedal seems really, really cool. So I go to my brother, the drummer, Todd. I say, Todd, I think I want to get one of those double pedals. He said, man, you better learn how to play one before you can play two. <laughs> and I live, that's what I live by. Yeah. I still have enough trouble with one. I, like, I don't blame you. So not have a double pedal? No. Oh, I have two. I've never. Like the only time I had a double pedal was early on when Blake was using, we were, it was pre-tracks, but it was the transitional period from going from not having tracks to, okay, there's drum loops on records. So I set up a little 16 That's by right. 16, yep. and I had a slave pedal. That's the closest I got to double pedal. Yeah. That was a Never George the, Strait tour, right? No, that no, wasn't me. <laughs> yeah. I think it's funny when dudes have one, and they only use it for crash and burns. Like, bro. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's me. That's me. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. After nice. five minutes of. Stop. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Oh. I think I have one, and I use it on two songs. I use it on Chicken because Troy likes he likes metal, so I use it just for that because you know it's just whatever. And I use it on uh, on loud. I just like I just double. So I does a couple snare drum things that just sounds cool when you double it with the feet. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I'm not good at it. Yeah, but it's enough. Yeah, it's like I, it's like. But get the point. Like, oh, yeah. you're just accenting what you're doing. But other than that, uh, yeah. And, and recently, I did create this weird three kick drum setup where I had to use a left-handed double pedal and a right-handed so to get to play all the bass drums, which is kind of like my studio setup at home, where I have three different bass drums like already set up and mic'd up, so I don't have to change them in and out. They're just there, but I can play them, you know. With, oh, okay. Yeah. Options. But, yeah, but I don't, but not not necessarily for you know. Yeah. I'm not doing, you know, Slayer or Megadeth, which I love Megadeth. Yeah. So I just realized how much I love Megadeth today. Today? <laughs> today. I was driving. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I think the biggest thing that kind of got me in a way prepared for the lockdown stuff and not playing. Sports, there were none. I love sports. You mm -hmm. love sports. You love sports. There were none. The sports world died. Yeah. March 12th. 2020. <laughs> yeah. And I listen to, I'd listen to sports talk radio. I'm like, all they're doing is talking about COVID and this is depressing. Yeah. So I put on Jack FM. I was like, oh, these yeah. are songs I love. Totally, dude. Like all the heart stuff in the 80s. Oh. Uh. And that propelled me to, man, I want to work that song up. Guess what? I didn't have a gig. Yeah. So I could work at my own pace to try to work up something. Yep. Manic Monday. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. let's try That's that. A great tune. Um, Cruel Summer was... by Banana Rama. Oh yeah, yeah. And I'm like, this brings me back. Song right there. Yeah, Tracy Broussard. 
that's my sophomore year of high school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Playing while mom and dad are gone. Dude. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it was good for my soul. And I'd come out of my little practice room like, I just play drums Feeling for three good. hours. Yeah. This is cool. No, that's fun. I I still have like all my old modern drummers for that reason. Yeah. Like if I ever feeling like I need to be inspired, I go, man, you know, Steve Gadd was on the cover of like 1996 or whatever. Look Make, at Kali Yuta. I was just like, oh, it just made me feel good about myself. Yeah. And I, I do that. Or listen, or I mean, I love music, so I listen to a lot of, I was the 80s, 90s guy too, so, you know. And then I got lucky enough to play with like Richard Marks. Dude, which is come hilarious. on, man. You know? <laughs> the intro licked it don't mean nothing. Yeah. Mm. You must have had a musical boner. I did. Well, the best part was like when I went to like audition for the gig, I didn't know how to count that drum fill in. <laughs> and I was like, hey, man, how do you guys count this in? He goes, we don't. Just play it. Band comes in. Okay. Sweet. All right. Here we go. If I could go back and have like a dream gig, it would be playing with Christopher Cross. Oh, yeah. oh I get that, dog. Ride like I the totally wind. I totally get that. He's still playing. I know. That is fun. He had a bad. Oh, deal right. with COVID, but there's two right. kinds of people in this world: Christopher, Christopher Cross fans and liars. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Man, if ever two musical dreams I wish would come true: playing with Christopher Cross, but being on one of those big festival dates in the mid '90s. Oh yeah, like yeah. Clay Walker's an opening act, <laughs> and Red yeah. Akins is playing like the five o'clock slot. Oh yeah, and maybe Brooks and Dunn is like the seven. Yeah, and then you might have George Strait closing the show. Yeah, or Do something like that. You ever like feel that. like you uh, like moved to town, or or not that you moved to town too late, or but that you were born two ten years too late? Yeah, in a lot of ways. Yeah, me, I do for sure. So, I sh- in this time of self reflection, which we've had a lot of. Yeah, I'd always say that. Man, I wished I'd moved like five years sooner. Yeah, but then I think about whatever artist. I would have been playing for, or the artist that was closing that set. How many are still working? True. So guess what? I'm the same age. Yeah. I just moved. What would I be doing? So God works in mysterious ways. Oh, yeah. I'm where I should be. I mean, timing is everything. I mean, that's the thing. It's like I know for myself, being here, being to, moving to Nashville earlier, probably may, may not have worked out so great because of my, you know, being immature. I'll just keep it with that. But I feel like I moved at the right time. Uh, I think the biggest thing for all of us and for anyone that in the music business or wanting to get in the music business is to make sure that you take advantage of every opportunity you can to meet people and play with them. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times people get stuck up. They think they're too good to play with somebody and they never do it. But like... Sometimes that person that you think you're too good to play with is the one that can hire you or 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 like recommend you for something else. I remember, yeah, being eh, I I went to the beer cellar one time. This is a few years ago, and uh, I hated that place. Never wanted to go there, but I went with a girl. She was like, "Let's go to the beer cellar." I was like, Ugh. "So I go to the beer cellar, and there's like a blues jam." And they were like, she's like, you should play. I've never, I've never gotten to see you play drums. I was like, I don't know, I want to fucking play drums. Not, not with these people. No, nope, not happening. So, I go to the bathroom. She goes up. She's like, my, whatever. He plays drums. She gets him to play. His name is Keo. So, they did. And I was like, Ugh. I got up. And I think that was too good. I just like, I just didn't want to play drums. I just want, I don't want to do it. I get up and play. It's not good. It's bad. No one is doing it right, including myself. My attitude is horrible in some ways. I say my, but I played fine. I was just like, it was obvious I didn't want to be there. I finished playing, and these two dudes came up to me. They were like, hey, man, like, you're a good drummer, man. I know, I know that, you know, the situation was not ideal, but, like, we're songwriters, and we have a catalog of about 200 songs, and we're looking for a drummer to record them. Everything is done but the drums. Gosh. And they were like, what are you doing tomorrow? And I was like, playing on your drum, playing drums on your songs. <laughs> yeah, and literally, I knocked out two hundred songs in like a week with these dudes. And it was not fun, but I got work from it. So I took advantage of you know I took advantage of the opportunity and and I did play even though I was like ah, I kind of didn't want to do it. I gave it my all even though my all couldn't help everybody and 
I think we all were giving our all, but we couldn't help each other, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But it was just funny because like you just never know where where the work's going to come from, you know. And so I did. I worked with these dudes for years. Actually, after that, the initial thing was recording these two hundred songs, and then after that, I did everything they did, and uh, they did film scoring. So I played drums and did stuff for like random films that I don't even know what they even are. Besides, like when it, sometimes when I get like the old paychecks from that stuff, but. I'm happy I did it. Like, and uh, I never gave that girl any money for it, though. <laughs> she didn't deserve it. No, <laughs> but you know, but it's she but kiss your ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but you know, but it's like, but I guess what I'm saying is that you know, you never know. Like, gifts come in all kinds of packages, and you don't know what it is. So, like, take advantage of any opportunity. If someone's like, "Hey, man, you want to sit in?" And if you feel like you can do a good job, I mean, if you're like shit face, don't do it. But like, if you feel like you can do a good job, yeah, hey, for shit face, do it, whatever. Yeah, you know, I've done it. But you know, like, but if you think you can do a good job, you just never know what may come from that. Totally. First of all, you may, I mean, ultimately, you may get some joy. You may sure. be like, man, I just played drums. I haven't played drums in 15 months, and I just played drums, and I had a good time. We all laughed, whatever. Man, what are you doing next week? You, the drummer can't make it. You want to sub this gig? Sure. Random songwriter. Hey man, you want to play drums in my demo? You know, you, know, you just yeah. you never know. You know, or it could sure. be this girl. Help! I love your playing. She could be your next wife. You never, you know, what I mean, like never know. You just because never chicks know dig what, drummers. They do, you yeah. know, but you never know what could come from that. You know, so it's like I feel like the biggest thing to do is to make sure that you take advantage of any and all opportunities you can that are that are safe. Some yeah. things, you know, you know when people give you bullshit. You know, don't even sure. know, like you know, there's. there's, there's you know, and especially in the early, my early years in Nashville, probably yours too, pre-internet, people could really give you a sack of it. You know, oh, man. You know, full, like, you know. Label interest. Yeah, label, in, oh, man, you're great. You know, you know what, man, I got this pub deal. We're going to do these demos, and it's, we're going to pay you through the pub. Just sign the card, and you get there, and you, like, sign a card, and you spend all day playing demos for some money. And they never pay you, yeah, because there's no, there's there's no pub company, yeah, and there's and the no and the card has mysteriously disappeared, and you have to go find that person and beat them up and get your money. I remember before I'd work my shift at the Hard Rock, picking up the Nashville scene and going to the back page. That's where they had, yeah, they had the ads for you know people looking for certain things, yep, or people, but then they had the gigs, yes. And boy, I did my share of those showing up, and I was like, "Yeah, this is not gonna work out." <laughs> yeah. But I'll never forget one I went to, and I brought my SR sixteen, and blew the woman's mind mm-hmm. that I had a drum machine. I was willing to play with a click, and I had tempos for everything. Mm-hmm. I'm like, "What kind of mfers have been living here?" <laughs> yeah. Because this was drilled into my head when I was in Louisiana, because yeah. I had dudes. Like McAfee yeah. or Ganaway that were saying, bro, you got it. And then I had yeah. some friends that had a date, had a record deal, and they would come up to Nashville and they're like, bro, they would tell me, you better start playing with a click. So 1992, 93, I'm fighting my way around a click with a live band. Yeah. That was hard. Oh, yeah. And I get to this audition. I'm not sure what you called it. And I got. People were they were so impressed that I did that. I'm like, who doesn't? My impression was everybody in Nashville, yeah, did that, yeah, and everybody that, could afford one. That at the time that was probably true. And yeah. that, if, if you wanted to, if you wanted a, a deal with a recording artist, and yeah, that started to sink in for me. Be the most prepared guy in the room. Absolutely, yeah. Whatever that means. Yeah. Now, not the best drummer. But the most prepared guy. And I yeah. found, because I had tempos and I had a click track, they were impressed. Yeah. I'm thinking, that? And knowing the songs, God no, forbid you know mm-hmm. the songs. Uh, no extra songs. I yeah. remember, I mean, I didn't get the gig, but I remember auditioning for Lee Bryce. And uh, they, you know, they auditioned like 12 drummers. And this was when, you know, when Michael was moving over to percussion. And uh, I was like the last guy, and they were, and they played the four same four. I bet songs. they were like, <sighs> and I showed up, and uh, actually they were, <laughs> they really uh, Paul Rippey. One, it's actually probably one of my favorite auditions. Actually, 
because we walked in and Lee was there, and I was like, "Hey, what's up, asshole?" <laughs> you know, I just say because I, I know first him. first impressions. You know? Yeah, I, I know him. So yeah. it was like we've been, you know, I, pl- I actually played drums on the showcase that where Lee got his record deal. So like I've known Lee for many years, you know, and they were like, "Man, you're like the most relaxed dude because you know everybody, whatever." And I was I walked in and we were and we played a couple tunes. And I was like, "Do you guys want to play something else other than these tunes?" That because you know I'm sure you just beat up with it. And they were like, "Yeah, what do you know?" And I was like, "Everything." So I I learned like all of Lee's tunes, and so we were just like playing his other songs. And when I when we were done playing, I remember talking to somebody in the band. They were like, "Hey man, so here's the deal. We got like there's a guy that we're gonna hire." You know, so you know, one of those arranged it's, marriages. It's, sure. we, we got, you know, we have somebody, and he's great. I said, he said we have two different dudes that we're kind of looking at, and we're going to take them out. But like, we needed to do audition thing, and you know, we love you. A couple years ago, you were gonna, you were probably gonna be the guy, but like, you know, whatever. So, yeah, whatever. Like, but thank you so much for like knowing the other tunes and making the end of this fun for us. And I was like, cool. Like, I didn't get the gig. I'm fine with that. But I'm happy that I was able to bring some joy. Yeah, and then that led to other stuff. Like, like they need they needed a drummer for some other things that they were doing that their drummer couldn't do. So they called me, or when Donnie needed a sub, they called me. I couldn't do it, but they called. So like, you know, there's there's things to do. You know, about being prepared that that will keep you in the game, even if you don't get the gig. Yeah. You know, but like showing up with a click. You know, uh, yeah. now everybody's on in ears having having a good set of in ears. Mm-hmm. Maybe having two sets of them, and yeah. also working knowledge of any electronic program like yeah, Ableton, I mean, yeah, Logic, whatever. Yeah, yeah. having yeah. good Pearl drums was always good, and great Zildjian <laughs> cymbals. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that would not apply over there. <laughs> and great Aquarian drum heads, the Evans. <laughs> But you know, it's like, but it's that's the thing, though. Yeah, Promar. Uh But you know, it's it, it it being prepared is good. It's also also nice to be like reactive to knowing that you can adapt to you know in situations stuff like that. But showing up, being pleasant. I mean, yeah, that goes a long way. I spent ten years subbing gigs for people before I had like a solid gig. And one of the things that kept me working was that people were like. Man, you're like a nice person to be around. You ain't the best drummer in the world. Thanks, assholes. But you're, but you know, but, but you're fun to be around. But you're fun to be around, and we like you. And obviously, I, I my playing was fine because if it was horrible, they do it. They would call someone else, and they did uh, eventually. But uh, so for the time, <laughs> but, yeah, but for the time, yeah. you're the last person. You know, uh, but you know, it's those things really go well in in the music business. Being pleasant. Being oh, prepared, yeah, yeah. Um, no doubt. Knowing, you know, knowing programs. Even if you're not the guy, even if you're just hired to play drums, it's nice to have knowledge of certain things because you might be able to help or send a tip in to someone, somebody else doing something to make it easier for them. Yeah, you know, like oh man, like or I remember we're talking about like the the Richard Marks thing. We did a gig with the symphony, and I. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think I'm the only guy. I was at that time. I was the only guy in the band that could read music, or that that was okay with reading music, you know, kind of thing. Uh, and I had studied like film scoring and in in or, an orchestral arrangement and stuff like that in college, which I dropped out of. So whatever, anyway. But one of the fun things was uh, me and the conductor talked, and I had his score. So as we were going to the tunes, as we were rehearsing the songs, we were playing and. As we were doing that, we'd have to stop, and Richard would be like, "Hey, let's take it from the chorus." And I'd be like, "Measure thirty-seven, because they, there was nothing, yeah, there." So I had to have that that yeah. communication with him, and you know, not saying that everyone needs to know music or whatever, but that small little skill helped make that day smooth because yeah. we had a full day of going over like eighteen songs, and we would ha- and and some of the charts weren't, you know, they didn't match to the new arrangements, and we need to do other things. And so having the ability to be a liaison between, you know, the artist, the musical director, because he was cool. He was like, hey, man, like, just, you know what's going on, so you just tell him. And so we had that, that line of communication, and it made it go smooth. So, so, so having little things like that helps. And you might you know. not know what skill it will be True. that will come in handy. Yeah. But to have one. And you, you don't know going into it either. Like, it's 
hard to believe my first gig was with Shane Miner in 1999. You're old. I know. And we were running tracks off of a mini disc player. Mm -hmm. Okay? <laughs> oh, my God. 1999. Then I go from that gig to Cindy Thompson, running tracks off of a mini disc player. Yeah. Then to Jamie O'Neill. We stepped up with, I forgot what, what rolling thing we would carry doing that. And then got with Blake, and there was no tracks. And then I'd say around Hillbilly Bone, probably 2009. Mm -hmm. It's like a job no one wants. Yeah. But And I know you hated it. You had to do it. I mean, it was, yeah. that was it. I and I learned. It. And I, you had to learn because that was part of the job. Yeah. And thankfully, there was a graceful learning curve because, you know, he didn't have a lot of stuff with tracks. So I was able to learn. Okay, yeah. let me learn this how to do this song. And then it goes to more songs, and then you slowly realize, wait, I'm learning Ableton. And the cool thing about it is there really is no right or wrong way mm -hmm. as long as the product, the tracks are being represented. True. And yeah. you're doing it. And I would meet with a lot of people, and they would be like, wow, you're doing it way too, that You're working way too hard. Yeah, I know but there's a the, shortcut here. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you learn those things. Yeah, but when things got into Simpty code and syncing, I was like, "Yeah, uh, uh <laughs> yeah. I'm tapping out, man. Yeah. I can't, yeah. man. You feel like you're driving an 18 wheeler full of gasoline on a frozen highway because you're, you're playing drums and running tracks. Uh, and if yeah. something gets squirrely, guess yeah. what? That's guess where they're looking. I watched this crazy fool. <laughs> um, when you guys, somebody missed a cue, whatever, while you're playing in the verse. You would scroll ahead so on dumb. Ableton, scroll I didn't ahead know to the chorus. <laughs> oh, yeah. I could see you actually with your you, – I mean, God. you literally had your two fingers on on, uh. on the map, you know, on the laptop in the mouse. I was like, I was like, oh my God, you're trying to play right now and find <laughs> find the reintro, dude. It was crazy. It, oh it was like God. a thing. I prided myself on it. Yeah, I was like, I'm gonna do it. And man, there'd be moments where, you, oh, I got it, and you missed it. And I, I think one time I finally got it, like on the outro, I'm like yes, <laughs> I got it. You're not going to defeat me, no. you bastard. <laughs> but like now, that's for us, for me, '96 era, that time mm -hmm. playing with a click. Now, yeah. now it's playing with a click and running tracks. Running tracks. Yeah. And do you have? Because if you're starting out with a new artist, they ain't paying for that stuff. Nope. You better have a tracks rig. Yep. Yeah. And a MacBook. Yeah. knowledge of Ableton. And Here's, now you can kind of charge for that, which is nice. Exactly. Here's a question before I part and pick up my daughter at Mommy's Day Out. Here's. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Wrong rap. God, talk about, that's the whitest thing I've ever heard in my whole life. Um, here's a parting question. Um, do, you in, do you want to, for both of you, do you want to, or do you even envision yourself Playing drums for a living when you retire. Yes. Yeah. And the reason I say that, having played down on Broadway again, mm -hmm. I realize I can do this till I can't physically walk. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty good at it. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, of course you when are. you go back and, and you're playing with new folks, because when you're on Broadway, it could be a different guy, different bass player, different guitar player. And you realize, hey, all those songs that I know are actually coming in handy. Mm -hmm. um, I can still, it made me realize still coming in with a good attitude will get you work. Mm -hmm. All the things that I had to do in 96 to get work still work now. They do. And so I do, I do realize that it might not be with Blake because who knows, man. He could decide next week, I'm good. Yeah. And you know what? I can honestly close that chapter and say, dude, that was awesome. Mm -hmm. No yep. hard feelings. I'm going to maybe get a job at Lowe's or something mm -hmm. or drive yeah. Uber and yeah. go play on Broadway. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be what right. about you? I, I'll do it until I drop, man. I mean, I, I've i always I've been wanting to make the transition to get into more production stuff. So um, I like to get into more producing. Uh, so I will play... At some in some capacity, I may not be playing live a whole lot, but I will do it until I until I can't do it anymore because honestly, it's the only thing I know how to do and do well other than breathing. I yeah. mean, and my breathing sucks, but you yeah, know, it's well. like 
but you know what I mean? It's like, that's, that's all I know. And, and, and it's provided me a great life. You know, my, my kid, I mean, you guys have all, we all have kids yep. and our kids get to have fun. They, they get to have a, a, a unique experience with their parents yeah. being, you yeah, know, I agree. Yeah. We're being, not working yeah. the drudgery of a nine to five yeah. and we're better yeah. parents. Yeah. We're like, yeah. we're happier. I, I know mean, I've been happier. Sense. Like, yeah. Just and, when my kids see me, I have, I was never able to tell them, yeah, I'm going to play downtown. It yeah. was either dad's leaving for however long. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I passed by my son's room. Hey, man, see you. Where are you going? I'm playing a gig. So he's seeing, oh, wow, dad's still playing. Yeah. But for a while, they're like, bro, you going to work? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my wife's like, bro, <laughs> come on, man. Yeah. But, you know, the, the fun thing, though, is that, you know, being, you know, being that most of our work is on the road, yes, we're gone. We're not gone a whole lot. But when we're home or when I'm in Wisconsin with my kid, I'm with her. She gets, yeah. you know, especially yeah. when she was younger. Now our kids are getting older. Yours are younger, but our kids are getting older because we're old. Yep. You're old. Anyway, I uh, am. Yes. Uh, but you know, it's like having that quality time of pick, picking your kids up from school. You know, homeschooling last year was a nightmare with yeah. me and my daughter uh, because we were doing it via Zoom. Oh. And <laughs> oh. you know, Bless and you. you know, and you know, seventh grade was a, a lot harder the third time I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Seventh grade is just tough. <laughs> you know, Period. The first two times it was cool. I was like thirteen and 12. hey, I know all this stuff. <laughs> thirteen now I'm and fifteen. Yeah, I'm yeah, in yeah, seventh grade. Yeah, yeah I, was I like, got a mustache uh, better than anybody else. So you know that stuff's tough. But uh, you know, but what about you, David? What you get? What's your? I, I don't You're know. You're multifaceted. I don't man. know. The deal is, you could front a band, yeah. and to this day, I want to play drums with you. Uh, you got to be able to it. sing a few things because I because I, I got to pass this jug. So. I see you, and I've always felt this way about you. The first day we met, because we had splash symbols, and it was like, did we just become best friends? God bless him. Oh, my goodness. And you're a dude that I see that's like, he could do almost anything, because you're very charismatic. Oh, please. And you're a great drummer and a great singer. Yeah. I'm like, and you kind of came, you were forced, in a way, to kind of come out of a shell. Yeah. Like, man, I got to work. Yeah. And now, you're the king of Broadway, bro. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I've seen God. your name in bathrooms. Oh, oh yeah. Jesus! I know you go. To, you go to the bathroom. It's, and it's like, insane. oh wow, damn. That's wow. where I am. But I've gone into each individual one of those bathrooms and put my name in there. Hey, me too. That's, no publicity's bad. I carry a sharpie. <laughs> yeah. And you sign Josh Turner picture. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've enjoyed hanging out with you, buffoons today. Yeah, it's just fun. We should do this again. A lot longer. We should do it like a weekly series. We should. Yeah. You think? Somebody would pick that up. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, yeah that'd be See? great. See, now yeah. we have a job. Yeah. Oh, look at this. We just got a gig. I oh, know. I don't right. have to play Sweet Home Alabama anymore. Yeah. Or, uh, wagon wheel. or Wagon Wheel. Or Wagon Wheel. Yeah. Well, it's been a great time with <laughs> Indeed. you fellas. Yes. David Black. Uh, Keo Stroud. Keo Stroud. Tracy Broussard. We're going to sign off yeah. with the Pulse, powered by Sennheiser. Yeah. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos just like this.